Hey everybody, Pete Greco here with Productive Corporation wanting to chat a little bit about Emotech. So what is this thing? How do I avoid getting it? How do I stop it? Just a few of the things we're going to uh, talk about. So uh, it starts with a phishing attack, much like most threats today. I think over 90% uh, originate there. The link is going to give you a polymorphic downloader. And what that means is the code changes every single time it gets downloaded. So it is impossible to detect with a signature based system. It rapidly spreads to other machines uh, in your network. And then from there, it does a whole bunch of things in a lot of different orders. Uh, it steals uh, emails, email addresses that you've already sent out and it can then start spamming them from your network, which can get you blacklisted. It steals credentials from browser caches. This can be things like all of your logins to banking sites and other uh, sites that you definitely want protected. Um, can also be passwords that get used for network logins that allow them to have an easier time communicating with Active Directory or other machines across the network. It both exfiltrates your data so that they can sell it on the dark web, but then it also downloads advanced ransomware uh, programs, one of which is BitPamer, a particularly hard one to stop and detect, so that they can charge you to get your data back while they're selling it on the, on the dark web. So uh, some ways to avoid getting this, and you really need to be doing uh, all of these things, and we're gonna drill down into this uh, a little bit, um, really an orchestrated phishing training is important. We talk to a lot of folks that are trying to do their own phishing training and the common themes that we hear there is they don't do it enough. They don't have any reporting to figure out who's really passing and who's really failing and figuring out where they need to get uh, uh, attention paid, um, right? So having a, a, a real program there, uh, bolstering that email security, uh, really paying attention to, to web filtering. And we're talking to too many folks these days that are not taking uh, web security as seriously as they could be and really thinking about it more as an employee trust issue versus turning off parts of the internet that simply don't benefit your business. One of these may be tricky or this next one may be tricky for some folks, removing PowerShell from workstations. A lot of fileless malware attacks and, and advanced attacks are leveraging running PowerShell scripts that cannot be detected by a, a traditional AV uh, scanning technology. Not having access to that goes a long way. Credential theft protection, advanced crypto protection, really locking down permissions and auditing those to make sure that people don't have any more than they need, the least privileged access model, and uh, not, not last and certainly not least, uh, behavioral threat detection, uh, super important. So we're going to drill down uh, a little bit into uh, where you can stop Emotet at the certain points on your network. So uh, on the gateway, uh, web control is going to prevent that anti-phishing link from making it out to the command and control server. Uh, intrusion prevention is hopefully going to identify the malicious behavior that uh, the first download dropper is going to exhibit and then data leak prevention, preventing data from getting exfiltrated off of your network. Uh, notice here we didn't highlight sandboxing, uh, big believers in sandboxing. Emotet unfortunately detects if it's running in a virtual machine and uh, remains stealthy uh, as long as it is, so it will not detonate inside of a sandbox. So uh, in general, we do recommend sandboxing, but recognize it's not the end all be all. Uh, for uh, for your security concerns. Domain controller, definitely getting anti-malware running on the DC, uh, important. Fully patched, super important. We talk to way too many folks that don't patch the DC for fear of causing a problem, uh, right? Which uh, when you have a problem on the, on the domain controller, uh, that can lead to nobody being able to log in and, and get work done. So that's definitely problematic. Getting 2FA enabled, uh, on the DC definitely helps with stolen credentials being used to access that critical machine. Um, so even if you don't have a robust 2FA uh, policy or plan, uh, getting it set up for RDP sessions and your DC uh, as well as VPN are definitely some key areas to, to take a look at. 
and limiting domain admins and domain admin access, which does create a little bit of work. We recognize that, but it really goes a long way for bolstering uh, security. On the email side, now notice again, we don't have sandboxing highlighted here, uh, specifically with Emotet, uh, it's gonna detect if it's in that sandbox environment, and it's not gonna do anything, which prevents it from having success there. Uh, so anti-spam, uh, important, let's, let's just keep that email away from the end user, if at all possible, um, right? That's my first choice. My second choice is the end user is well-trained and uh, is not gonna click on that or not gonna fall for it. Link rewriting, being able to actually uh, blow up the link and figure out if it's going to a matched spot. It's a great feature that a lot of email security uh, programs have. Anti-spoofing and DLP. Let's make sure that those emails, if they say they're originating from a, from a location, that they're actually coming from there. That goes a long way. Some of those anti-spoofing techniques would prevent some of those Emotet uh, emails. Some of them will not uh, at all because it's not a spoof. It's a a, uh, an imposter, right? And so that's going to get right past there. And then again, DLP, let's prevent information from uh, going out. And then also, uh, and I should have put this on here, uh, bi-directional anti-spam. So let's make sure that we're blocking spam that's coming from the inside out. Everybody wants to block it from coming in, uh, but let's make sure that if we're the spammer, we're blocking that at the, at the gateway. That also goes a long way. And then end users. Uh, right, and so uh, several things that we can be doing here, fileless malware specific protection, let's stop things like code caving and return oriented programming attacks, uh, application encryption, for sure, that way if data does leak off the network, it goes out encrypted and it's useless uh, to anybody outside of the environment, uh, right, location independent web filter, so if your folks leave, Let's have the same web policy applying to those machines as if they're in the office. We don't want them to be any more exposed just because they've gone home for the night, they've gone to a client site, they're at a conference, whatever it might be. And again, data leak prevention, let's try and prevent that data from getting moved off of the network. And when you mix that in with application encryption, it can really be quite powerful to make sure that the data is protected. It doesn't necessarily protect it from getting off the machine, but if it gets off the machine, it's going to be totally useless to, to anybody else. <clears throat> For the whole network patching, a lot of these threats in Emotet uh, as well take advantage of existing vulnerabilities. And if you have a uh, mechanism where you're only patching the most critical machines or you're only patching servers, you're still leaving a wide open gaping hole. So patching everywhere. Uh, super important. Um, EDR gives you the capability to hunt for threats. Um, and where that's super important with Emotet is it spreads and continues to reinfect. So it's important if you get it to isolate all the infected machines, hunt those out, get them clean before allowing them to rejoin the network. Otherwise, you're going to continue to reinfect machines that you've already visited and, and cleaned. Um, and you don't want that. Phishing training, we already talked about that. Machine learning and artificial intelligence, looking for things that are not known but look suspicious, becoming more and more critical in today's uh, threat environment. And then password hygiene, super important. Uh, let's don't be using the same password for any two applications. That way, if a credential does get heisted, you're not going to be able to use that same thing on any other systems. And this is a tough one for end users because they want it to be easy, they want it to be quick, um, and uh, you know the, the advent of password management really can put you into a situation where uh, folks can, can be using really lengthy, complex passwords that are impossible to guess, and a different one and a unique one for every single login that they, that they have, um, right? And then SIM, and really, I didn't highlight anything here because all the things that SIM do are gonna help you identify if you've got this kind of an outbreak, where you've got it at, so you can start isolating those machines. Depending on your SIM uh, product, a lot of remediation tools uh, available in these. And if you want to chat more, we'd love to, uh, we'd love to talk with you about it. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. I hope this was useful. If you want to learn more about Emotet or just want to learn more about bolstering different areas of your security posture, we'd love to talk. So give us a call.
Thanks and have a great day.